Hi everyone, welcome to Gadgets with German. Today we have a really cool episode. We have the new Asus AR VR phone and you can see we have it hooked up to the screen behind me. It's linked up through one of those new 4K Chromecasts. It's live mirroring so you can see what's going on here. We're going to do a lot of AR demos during this episode so it's going to be really fun and interactive. Uh, and if anyone can please send in your questions on Twitter and Facebook, Periscope, about this phone, about AR, the functionality, Google Tango versus AR kit, we'll get to them throughout the show. Now, my main takeaway from this phone, it's a premium phone, it's high end, it's in that price echelon with the Google Pixel, the Samsung S8, the iPhone 7, 7 Plus, but the AR content is really the focus of this phone. Unfortunately, however, the AR functionality and the VR functionality drains the battery life a little bit when you're using it. You'll only get a couple hours of battery life if you're going full AR or VR with this thing. However, it is still premium, but the AR content is pretty limited at this point. And you're limited in terms of the headsets. You can plug this in uh, to the Daydream headset, whereas there's other phones that go into multiple uh, different VR headsets and have some more content. Now, the main highlight is augmented reality. We want to do a lot of demos, and we're going to talk through all of this uh, while doing those demos. So let's zoom into the monitor, and let's jump in. So I have this folder, and again, this is hooked up. Uh, to this TV via 4K Chromecast, and I've downloaded some of you know, the most interesting AR apps I was able to find. Now, the first one that I want to talk about is this Amazon product preview app. So let's jump in here. It loads up, and let's hit get started. Now, the way this works is it uses the camera system on the back of this phone, and I'll show you this a little bit later on the other camera. It has three lenses to do depth mapping, focusing and motion in the standard 23 megapixel camera. But let's say you're in your house and you want to buy a new TV, but you don't know if it's going to fit on your wall, right? So you open this app, you go where you want to put it, and you can hide this to take a look here. Now, see this TV, that's my wall space, that black border we have there. And you can tilt it and whatnot if you have a mount or whatnot to project that. But you can see it's a little too big for that area, right? So let's go back and see, hmm, why is that too big? So that's a 55-inch screen right there. That's too big for me. Let's see a 32-inch if that fits a little bit better. Yeah, 32-inch looks about right, but you might want something bigger. There's a 24-inch here that's smaller, other sizes. But the cool thing is, is that you can move it around, right, and move the camera here. OK, that seems like a perfect size if I want to put it on this brick wall right there. So that Amazon application is a real world use case for AR. Now, you may have seen some demos with AR Kit. AR Kit is Apple's version of the augmented reality platform for the iPhone. It uses the sensors that they have in the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus. It works well there, too. But you get a little bit better depth mapping uh, when you're using uh, the the Asus phone because it has those sensors. Now, I want to walk you to the back of our studio here uh, to show you something else. This is a visualizer uh, for BMW. I actually think this is one of the cooler applications you have here. And let's try to find the car. Let's put the car in here. And what it does is, when it works, is it throws the car into your field of view. OK, it put the car here for some reason. And you can see our studio here. But it puts the car here. And you can drag it around if you want. Let's drag it right here. And you can sort of visualize what the car looks like. Now, this is not to scale. This is not to actual size. This car, I've seen one in person, is a bit bigger, actually. But you can change the color of the car to all different colors that it comes in. You can slide through it. You can change the interior colors to get an, uh, an idea of what it looks like from there. And then you can look at the different wheels. Now, it's what's really cool because it has depth mapping and this phone really knows where you are in space. You can actually go lower. And I'm bending down here, and it's like a field of view that you're actually seeing when looking right at uh, the rims of this car. So that's really cool right there. I think it's really interesting, and people will like experimenting with this. And again, the benefit of this system is that you really get a good idea of where you are in space. This phone has different sensors using infrared lights that it could really track your movement and your motion to better understand where you are. And you can even look at the top of the car if you're just imagining you're looking at the car. And I can go to the back here and sort of look at it at all angles. So it is actually really interesting. Now, there's also a really cool game I want to show you. Uh, and it's this slingshot game. It's called Slingshot Island. Now, I'm going to be pointing at the back carpet here in our studio. 
so you can take a look at this. And the first thing you want to do with this is you want to place your island. Now what's really cool about the sensors on this phone versus what you would get on an AR kit because it uses the existing iPhone hardware is that you can place the island and it will know where you put it in place and it will retain that space. So you can change the height here a little bit uh, and I want to move it a little bit here and you're going to confirm the island so you know where it is in place, right? You can jump into the level you're at takes a second to load here. Okay, we're in level one. Now the aim of the game is to align your slingshot to this little tower on the island and you aim it right and then you try to knock it down. And if you score a certain level of points, you'll be able to go to the next level in this game. So we're gonna aim here, right at that island. So by clicking the aim button and by moving the phone, I can sort of change my trajectory of the slingshot and I can fire here and let's see how I did. I hit a little bit of it, I sort of missed. I'm not very good at this game. Let's fire another one here. I'm trying to knock this down. No, didn't work either. Let's try from here. And I moved back a bit. I might get a better trajectory now. There we go. Knocked it over. That's a thousand points. And I completed it and I can go to the next level here. Let's try level two. And let me walk a little bit here and we can see, I can hit it from the side. There you go, I knocked that. I hit that first floor here. Let's try again. Hit that, there we go. Wow, the thing's falling over. Completely destroyed that. And you can see the AR applications, especially for gaming. It's quite fun here. And let's do one more level from this angle here. Let's see if we can get this one. Knocked it down a little bit. There we go. One more. Uh, wasn't able to get it. I failed on that one. Okay, let's take some questions here uh, to see. And you can see the AR environment here. I'm going to zoom back out here and take a look. You can see the home screen there. Okay, so how does the image of the car compare with the real size? Now, that's referring to the BMW app that we showed. You can choose between different BMW cars. It wasn't actual size, right? But you do have really good angle of view and motion sensitivity, so you can sort of reach over to see it like you're really on top of the car. You can go down and get a really like eye look to see what you're looking at. It's pretty realistic, but not actual size. Uh, another question coming here, are there any interior design and planning apps? That's a good question. Why don't we take a look and see some of the applications that you can download for Google Tango? So let's zoom back into the monitor here and take a closer look at some of the other offerings. So you can see there is an app called Wayfair and let's see some of the detail on this one. So this app lets you sort of look at an item, how it would look in your home before you actually place it there. And we did the demo earlier, I'll show you again for those just joining us about this Amazon preview app, which I actually think is one of the more fascinating applications for AR. So you can sort of be in an environment here and see how a TV might look in your home. We tap it there. Now this is a 65 inch TV, clearly too big for here, but if we move the screen over here, you know, it's a little bit better. We might want to go with the 55 inch. And this measures the space in your environment digitally through the different sensors on this phone. So it's a pretty good representation of how big the TV is compared to how much space you have. Now, people are asking about what other apps are available for this AR functionality. Let's jump back into the Tango App Store and take a look. There's this dressing room app from Gap, which would sort of show you what a certain you know, item of clothing would look like on you. There's a Chelsea kicker app, a soccer game, Domino World, all sorts of stuff. There's the Amazon app we were just looking at, the BMW app. Google has its own measurement app. It's sort of a demo to see how it looks in space. Magic Plan app is how different appliances would look in your place. And like I mentioned, the content selection at this point is sort of you know, limited. You don't have a lot of apps. And another thing to note is that this Asus phone is one of two phones with built-in Google Tango support. The other one is a Lenovo phone that came out recently. 
But the benefit of this Asus phone is that it also has virtual reality functionality. And let's zoom back out here and talk a little bit more about that. So I mean, as you can still see on the monitor behind me, there is Daydream support. You can see uh, down here the Daydream app next to the Tango app. And what Daydream allows you to do is plug the Asus phone into a Google Daydream headset. Now the Google Daydream headset is primarily designed for the Google Pixel. And it's sort of this mesh fabric-y pair of simple glasses. You put the phone in, uses the phone's camera sensors and the screen in order to present an Oculus, almost like virtual reality uh, environment. Now, a few other people are asking about ARKit versus Google Tango. Now, the main difference is that ARKit works on all iPhones from the iPhone 6S, which came out in 2015 on. So it uses the existing equipment, it uses the existing camera functionality of the iPhones uh, that have been released since 2015 in order to have ARKit working. But it doesn't have as good depth sensing functionality as Google Tango because it has the extra sensors, the extra lenses on the back that we'll get into a little bit later. And another thing is, is the content differentiation is huge, right? ARKit is on so many phones and the App Store environment has so many developers. There's like 2 million apps at this point on the App Store. So there's a lot of functionality coming down the road from ARKit, whereas the selection is very limited on Google Tango because there's only two pieces of hardware that support it right now and not as many developers who are interested in developing for such a small amount of devices that support this functionality. Another thing that I've noticed while testing this is that Google Tango sort of drains the battery life. I know when we started this demo, we were around 65%, and we've been doing this, what, for five, 10 minutes already, and we're already down 10%. So imagine playing an AR game like that slingshot game I showed for a while. Your battery life is going to drain quickly, and probably even more quickly if you put it in the Daydream headset. Another question coming in here, can you use it to play Pokemon Go? Well, I'm sure Pokemon Go, everyone loves that. And of course, you can download the uh, uh, initial Pokemon Go AR app like you can on iPhones, on Android phones. And of course, this phone runs Android, but I haven't seen a Google Tango optimized version. I'm sure they're probably going to work on that as they continue exploring the different functionality in Google Tango. I wouldn't be surprised to see a launch on Google Tango and on AR Kit when that comes out with iOS 11 uh, in September. Another question coming in here, um, are there any, or how does the AR affect the battery drain? Yes, so like I said, uh, the battery life drains pretty quickly when using the uh, AR functionality on Google Tango. Now, if you're looking for a phone that does both AR and VR, this is the phone to get. This is the only phone I've seen on the market that does both from the get-go. It has the sensors for all of them. But if you're looking for a phone that primarily does daydream and virtual reality, you might want to look at the Samsung S8 because it sort of allows you to plug this phone into Daydream. Then you have the Oculus Rift or the Oculus Gear VR that you can plug it into. Now, there's another thing I wanted to show you. I want to show you more about the design of the hardware. So let's zoom back on here into the hardware and, and take a, uh, a closer look. Now, you can see on the back here, it has three different sensors. One is a depth sensor. One is a motion sensor. Uh, one lets you know how to do the measurement, so how big of space you have in front of it. And they work together to produce not only pictures in the camera app, but also for the VR and AR functionality. Some of them are used for the Daydream headset. Others are used for the AR demos that we showed you. And I'll do another one here uh, in a minute for those just joining us. You have the flashback here. And that's a 23 megapixel sensor. And with the depth and mapping sensor, you also get uh, portrait mode-like functionality. So let's zoom back out here and let's do another AR demo. So let's uh, zoom back into the monitor. Let's zoom back into the monitor and we'll do another AR demo here uh, for you for those just joining us. Now this is a Hot Wheels app. I actually had some fun playing with this earlier. And the way this works is it maps where your environment is and it sort of allows you to jump in and be interactive with it. So it's asking me to zoom into here uh, to test drive right here. I can tap the test drive button and hold to launch and then just let it go. And you can see I knocked over some bricks, right? Or some blocks and I got my score. How did I do? I did well, I unlocked a new track. Now let's take a look at another one here. Let's see what we have here. Uh, the first tutorial challenge. Let's see how that works. Oh, that's the same one we just did. But you get the idea here. So, you know, 
pretending to be a Hot Wheels car and you can change the different cars you want. This is the Bruiser car, that looks pretty good. You have to buy it, obviously. And we have some more people asking to see that BMW demo again. Um, so let's jump in here and look at the BMW Visualizer app. Now you can see here's the car and let's drag it a little bit closer to us. And right now for those asking if it's actual size, so right now by looking in the frame here by holding the phone, yeah, it looks about actual size. It's really taking up a lot of the room like a normal car would. And here it's floating away from us and let's move it closer. Okay, so let's take a look. You can actually go inside here and you can look like you're going inside uh, the car itself. You can change the interior. You can see that right here. It's very cool. You can go to the back of the car. To, you can see the dashboard as well. So if I go in there, looking inside, you can see how cool is that, looking in the dashboard. It's like you're actually in the car. Right here, I'm in the passenger seat. So that's very cool, and you know that's just a taste of what augmented reality is like on this, but also what you might get in AR kit with similar apps. And, you can also go between different models of cars. So you have the BMW i3, which is another electric car. And let's let this load up and take a look at that in a second. And it takes about a minute to load some of these up if you're loading them for the first time. This was like the third or fourth time I've loaded up this particular car, so it loaded in a couple of seconds. So here's the car. Open the doors here. It's floating in midair. <laughs> Let's try to drag it down a little bit, back it up. Okay, now it's no longer actual size. It's shrinking a lot. Okay, see I'm having a little bug here where it's having an issue with tracking, but you get the idea here. It, this is not a great environment because there's so much going on in here, but it works pretty well with the i3. So let's get out of that app and take a look at the Slingshot Island app again because some more people are asking about that. Thought it was really cool. I actually think that game is a lot of fun having an issue there. But let's try to load that up again. So loading the game here. And you can see the placement is really good. I place the island, I can change the height, confirm the island, jump into a level and can get going. So let's fire. It's a little bit better than my first try. Oop, I think I knocked that one over. There we go. Okay, so we just knocked over that and we're gonna get to the next level. Cool, so let's go back down to our set here. So overall, I think this Asus AR VR phone is a very powerful phone. It's very fast. If you're not using AR, the battery life is decent. But if you're going into AR and VR and Google Daydream, it will drain the battery life very quickly. But of course, those are high intensity graphic based apps. So if you're doing regular stuff like texting, watching video, downloading movies, texting and messaging on Facebook, Twitter, browsing the web, all that, you should be fine, email, normal tasks. But overall, I think it's a premium phone. It's fast, the camera system is great, it takes really good pictures, it has the depth effect like the iPhone 7 Plus. But if you're looking for an Android phone and you want VR and AR functionality, this phone is for you, obviously, because it's one of the first to have those. But if you're not really into that type of stuff, you don't really need the AR or the VR, you might want to look at some other Android phones like the Google Pixel or the Samsung S8. Thank you very much. This is Gadgets with German, and we'll see you next time.